memory of riding bikes was actually learning how to ride my bike without training wheels. My dad chasing me up and down the street. I kept crashing. I was getting upset, probably crying. And he went inside to take a break. And when he came out, I was just ripping up and down the street by myself. I started riding when I was in Oregon, uh, racing BMX. Then we began to move around the country a lot. So as I grew up and progressed in riding, I got a little dose of a lot of different scenes and a lot of different aspects of riding, from racing to riding trails, later introduced to street riding and riding parks. I would say the most influential scene that I became a part of is the Phoenix, Arizona scene. That was really where I started to ride trails heavily. We had trails there called Union Hills. Uh, people like Brian Val, Fatty Patty, but then started to get more and more influenced by Gons and Rat Boy and people like that in, in the Arizona scene who rode street. So a typical week for me and some of the crew there would be to go to the racetrack, go to the trails, go ride street, hit Thrasher land. Our goal in that scene was just to ride anything we could. So that was probably the most influential scene on my riding style. I think my first video appearance was my section in Ride Magazine's Turbulence video. I don't remember my first magazine photo, but I remember that I was working at a bike shop and riding for Kink at the time, and I got an incentive check for getting in the magazine. And when I got that incentive check, I immediately quit my job. And <laughs> considered myself pro and I was like I made it this is it and uh, yeah that money ran out pretty quickly <laughs> I mean, I have so many good memories of, of kink trips I mean I was on the team for 10 years so I think the first trip I went on was the kink American destroyer tour and that that had everybody from Nate Hansen to Dave Young Jim Selinski, Rob Tibbs. Fast forward to years later, like Wong Tran and Casey Badger. The thing I loved most about the King trips and something that I think I still carry with me was the fact that we kind of just always rode everything. That's what's really cool to me about looking back on the King team and the current Sabrosa team is like all the guys involved were just really into riding everything. We were in Lyon, France on a shadow conspiracy trip. We were talking about stuff that we'd always wanted to do and I talked about a curved wall ride downstairs and how I thought it was possible but I'd just never seen one before. When you go overseas there's just it seems like there's way more of them than you could ever find in the States with all the old architecture and things like that. And we were at a little brick bank spot and Byron came riding up to us from the other side of the building and he's like, you're not gonna believe this, but found a spot you gotta come check out. Definitely my first thought was, holy shit, this is way too big. This isn't what I was thinking of when I had this in mind, but kind of like the culmination of being on such an awesome trip with the Shadow Dudes and like the stoke was high and I just decided like, I hadn't seen one before so I might as well go for this one went down a couple times and then on the third try made it all the way to the bottom and was just so stoked on that. <laughs> well we started Sabrosa in 2006. Obviously one of the first things I did as the brand manager was put myself on the pro team. <laughs> and that's clearly because I just wanted to represent what I was doing to the fullest. But then, you know, as Sabrosa grew and uh, as I grew up a little bit and moved out to Florida, you know, working at Sabrosa and developing products and planning out travel and the responsibilities that comes with being a brand manager kind of just started to need more of my time. And I, I looked at both jobs as full-time jobs. Like, I wanted to give 100% to both. And it just got to a point where I couldn't give 100% to both. Yeah, probably around 2008 or so, I kind of took a step back from the riding side of things just to focus more on building, building our brand. 
I mean, we had a big list of names. I wish I could remember some of the duds, because, you know, at the time, you're like, this name is going to be sick, this name sounds so cool, and but then you start to say it a couple more times, and it just really wears off. And Sabrosa was a name we had on the list that just never, to me and Ronnie, that name just never got old and never got tired. And, you know, it's got a lot of meaning as far as like the symbol of a rose hanging upside down it was the symbol for secrecy. And it meant anything discussed under that rose was to remain a secret. It was like an unspoken word or bond that you had. So it was kind of like a crew mentality and uh, that's what we kind of built the brand around was like, um, you know, like the brotherhood aspect of it.